Wonderful to be in God's house. The Anchor Church, San Diego. The end of July 2013. We're still here. Can you believe it? And what a day it is we are living in. What a day of change and a day of challenge. Beautiful people from everywhere have walked through the doors today. Visitors, guests, people I hope I get to meet. So happy with these reports. Good singing, good worship. Way to go, everybody. Everybody doing your job. Especially good to have the Yunkins here today. That's a German word, the Yunkins. It means full of the Spirit. Now, if I was Brother Mahaney, that's what he would say, but I just made that up. Praise God. Amen. We love the Yunkins and Kendra. Wave your hand again back there. She's part of this church. She grew up here. We love her dearly. Beautiful children. Always good to have our families come by and come home. They're over there in Lake Havasu. Amen. What is a Sioux? A lot of attorneys live there. Have a Sioux. Praise God. But it's good to see you today. I've always wanted to go over there and have to come see you. I've heard so much about Lake Havasu. Is that man-made or natural? Wow. Amen. You glad to be alive? Glad to be breathing this morning? Amen. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation is a radical thing. It's not a little hide me under a bushel thing. Keep it real quiet. Don't let anybody know. Secret agent man. When you're saved, you're, you're radicalized. Everybody seems radical today. Isn't everything, isn't everything radical? All the people that are demonstrating... Everybody's radical about what they believe in. Amen. Well, the Yunkin City's a Cardinal fan. Cardinal fans are radical. Amen. They're, they're, that's short for fanatic. Is there any, anybody that's still a fanatic about Jesus Christ? <laughs> Amen. Now, you can, argue, you can argue with me. I is what I is. I believe what I believe, and I believe this book. I believe every word of it, every single word. I believe this book. That's what I preach. You will not find me preaching something ever that's not in this book. Because heaven and earth is going to pass away, but his word will never pass away. And uh, I see my wonderful friends here today from Iran. And all of my relatives would say to me, my name is Andrew Bar David Urshan from the village of Abajalu in Ormia, Iran. That's how all my family talked. Praise God. So it's good to have my Persian brother here today. Someday we break bread with grape leaves and dolma. Shukalala. Shukalala. Amen. My, my uh, father spoke very good Swedish. My mother spoke Farsi. They never taught us the language. They just wanted us to be good little Americans. Man, I wish they had taught me those languages. If I spoke Swedish and Persian and English and Spanish, I could have been an FBI agent. I am an FBI agent. Full Bible investigation. Praise God. Full Bible investigation. I got to be careful. We got cops in this audience. I'll get in trouble. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Wonderful servants and people. Now, I'm stirred up. I'm stirred up. Praise God. Um, I don't apologize. Like I said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I have been privileged to preach in the four corners of the earth the same gospel, the same things I preach in this pulpit. And... Uh, because of God and to his glory, I've seen thousands receive the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues in every country that I've been in. Isn't that amazing? This thing works in any country, any culture barriers. I have seen with my eyes greater healings than some of the New Testament healings. I have watched God do instantaneous, miraculous things. 
I have watched demon-possessed people completely delivered. Hallelujah. So it's too late to argue with me. Uh, I'm going to preach what I feel the Lord has led me to preach. Yet I see wonderful people in this audience I didn't expect to see here today and friends and neighbors and, and, and all kinds of folks. So I ask you to excuse me because I'm a little stirred up this morning. Amen. You have got to meet fire with fire. You've got to meet spirit with spirit. Amen. And it's not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. I'm reading from Luke 8:22, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 22. Now it's it's camp meeting time. Everybody say camp meeting time. Come on, say it like a southern with mucho gusto. It's camp meeting time. I want you to forget that picnic. That picnic does not exist. Forget the picnic. Give God a good solid 45 minutes, all right? Amen. Let's act like we're in Louisiana and it's hot and humid and it's Tioga and I'm preaching the Louisiana camp. Any, do we, got any, we have any Louisiana people out there? Any Louisiana people? Come on now, Louisiana camp. They got 10,000 people at that camp. My God, if you can't preach to 10,000 people, you might as well go home. So Gideon's army out here today, you got to be 10,000 ameners for me. Amen. Luke 8 and verse 22. Now it happened. Everybody say it happened. Everybody say it happened. On a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. If Jesus makes a statement like that, you can make sure no matter what happens, you're going to the other side. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. You know, we, we are we're big and b -b 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 bad to the bone when we got everything under control. But you're in the middle of the lake, and the water is filling the boat, and you can't swim? They were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing, even now. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. The raging of the water. And the water ceased and there was a calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid. And marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Then they sailed in the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite side of the Lake of Galilee or the Sea of Galilee. When he stepped out on the land, when he stepped out on the land, there met a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes. Of course not. Nudity goes with demon spirits. Nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. Think of that, folks. He lived in a cemetery. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice. What am I to do with thee? You, Jesus, son of the most high. God. I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bonds, which was driven by demon forces into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because of many demons that had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them, the pigs, and he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down into a steep place onto the lake and drowned. When those who saw that, saw what they had, had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. 
This is some of the most amazing scriptures that I'm going to finish reading right here. Then they went out to see what had happened. There's the news, guys. What happened? And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And the town was afraid. They also had seen it told them by what means he had been demon-possessed was healed. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them. For they were seized with a great fear, and he got into the boat and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him and said, I might go with you and be with him. But Jesus sent them away, saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. When Jesus took care of the greatest problem in the province, the scariest thing coming against the city, and Jesus delivered it, they said to Jesus, please leave. We don't want this. I'm preaching this morning, defenders and protectors of an unclean spirit. Defenders and protectors of an unclean spirit. In the name of Jesus, speak to every heart here. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Clap your hands to the Lord. This is the story of Jesus' encounter with a demon-possessed man. We're speaking today about demons, devils, wizards, the occult. And there's a certain succession that takes place in the work of evil spirits. Amen. I'm not in some kind of voodoo subject here this morning. I'm in the Word of God. And I could tell you how demons work and evil spirits work. The Bible calls them unclean spirits. They're unclean for a reason, folks. And they work in a succession called oppression. Everybody say oppression. Obsession. Say obsession. And then finally possession. The three workings of evil spirits, oppression, obsession, finally the end is possession. They take over a region. They take over people. And uh, I'm going to prove to you today by the word of God what's happening in America. They're, They're taking over America very rapidly. Jesus had just crossed the Sea of Galilee with his disciples. He was in the little boat. And because he was God manifest or made visible in the flesh, he was divinity covered by humanity. He got hungry like we do. He got tired. He got weary. He ministered to tens of thousands of people and multitudes. And Jesus would go until he just flat socked out. He got in the boat and he was fast asleep in the boat. If Jesus is on your boat and he's asleep, you don't have a thing to worry about. But as they were crossing the sea, now uh, Ty's here today, my buddy Ty and his brother, and uh, they're from Eureka, and uh, that's where I have found it. And there's a man up there named John McDonald, the 22-foot boat. And I've been out on that boat a few times. Most of the time, it's on a day like this, and we're catching salmon and, and anything else that'll bite the hook. But that little boat out there, I have been in it when the storm comes up. I'm talking about, they talk about these six-foot waves, and uh, it's not fun to be in a boat because... Most guys in the boat will start yelling this word called Ralph. They hang over the side and they say Ralph real hard. And it's really a tough thing. It'll scare the daylights out of you when, when the water's coming up to the side of the boat and slapping on you. And you're going up and then you're going down in the wind. And, and the Bible lets us know that these professional fishermen were terrified. 
They thought they were going to die. They felt like they were going to drown. And Jesus was woke up, Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? And Jesus gets up. He probably yawned a little bit. And, uh, he walked out to the edge of the boat, held out his arms. I had two dogs in my life that I just loved. One was a Rottweiler. His name was Samson. The other one was a, was a black shepherd from Germany. Black German shepherd. His name was Viking. And uh, those dogs were very trained. My wife couldn't really handle them. My son Vince couldn't handle them, but this guy could handle them. I'm, I'm alpha male, hallelujah. And uh, I would put a muzzle on that. I would put a muzzle on that big Rottweiler, huge, muscular, massive dog. But when I'd yank that thing and say, sit, he, would, woo, 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 woo. he, just, he just took it from the alpha dog. And Jesus basically... What he said was, Oh, thou wind be muzzled! Now, I'd like to have been on that ship. The lightning, the thunder was pounding, and suddenly it goes like a switch of a channel. Bright sunshine. Dark clouds gone. White crashing waves turn to a calm. An amazing artistry of change in the elements. And here is the disciples who in in five seconds thought they're going to be overboard because the boat's filling with water. I'm sure the water went out too. I'm sure it was right back to perfect fishing conditions. And they looked and said, that's a good position to say the word what? 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 manner of man is this that even the waves and the winds obey him give the lord a hand clap for that praise god this is real hallelujah if you'll read the story it says they even had more fear not from the storm the fear of the lord what kind of god what kind of master Do we have? It still had not sunk in that this was God manifest in the flesh. The master, the Lord, the Alpha, the Omega, the authority over all things, the King of kings. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. So just as Jesus said, we are now going to cross over to the other side. They got to the other side. And when Jesus put his foot... When Jesus' toes touched the first grains of sand on the beach, as Jesus put his first leg out of that boat, there met a man out of the tombs, a strange sight, the wild man of Gadara, naked, foaming at the mouth, breaking chains, no man could tame him, bleeding from his terrible inflicted wounds and screaming. And the Bible says he was possessed with evil spirits. He was full of devils. Full of them. Does anybody know what a legion is? Call the legion. Let's get the Roman soldiers and call the legion. 6,000. This guy had 6,000 spirits in him. 6,000. Mary Magdalene had seven. He had 6,000. They would bind him and change in the state hospital. He was like the man of steel. He broke the chains. He broke the bonds. They couldn't hold him in the state hospital. They couldn't hold him in the prison. This is what the Bible says. And so he went back out and he lived in the cemetery. He lived in the tombs. He possessed an unclean spirit. He was a defender and a protector of an unclean spirit in his body. Oh, Pastor Larson, it's 2013. I went to Yale and Harvard. You really think I'm going to believe that stuff about demons? Do you really believe that? 100%. 1,000%. 
Absolutely, hallelujah. A real devil and real demons who oppress and obsess and possess people. There's a real devil at work on America today like never before. There's a real devil at work in California and Hollywood. There's a real devil at work in San Diego and Tijuana, Mexico. And anybody, anybody that's trying to live a godly, spirit-filled life today, you are being buffeted daily by a devil. You meet the devil. You meet spirits every day they crash into you head on why brother larson because we are in the spiritual conflict of the end time absolutely bible says in ephesians 6 12 ephesians 6 12 let me tell you something right now let me give you a little revelation you having a problem with a person your boss hates your guts, have a problem with your family, have a problem with an aunt or an uncle or a mother-in-law. Let me tell you something. They are masks and disguises for the devil who's really working behind the scenes. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Get it in your head. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against, look what it says, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers. Everybody say the rulers. We are fighting today, and if you're looking at me here, we can't see Jesus physically. I'm standing up here. This just could be a bingo game or a beer rally or something else. Here we are in this building, and we are fighting against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Oh, God. A few years ago, it's been a lot of years ago, there was a lady came down here after the altar, got done preaching. I got done preaching. She walked down. She was right about that fourth chair. And my eye caught her eye. And something was not right. And I went down and laid hands on her head. Now you can, you can explain it any way you want. But I want to tell you, when I laid my hands on her head, her arm came up and knocked my arm away. And she looked at me so wild-eyed and with a, a bass voice out of a, a woman. She goes, I'm not coming out. It made my bones chill. My hair curled on the spot. Whew! And I went over and got a guy named Frank Dibbs. He was a detective. He was a 350-pounder. I said, Brother Dibbs, I got a devil over here, and I need help. He came over with me. We are two big men, and we put our hands on top of her neck, and we began to pray for her, and she come out of that pew like a bucking bronco. I'm telling you. I can feel the power of hell coming against us. But there's one thing greater than the devil. There's one thing greater than unclean spirits. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We prayed for her about five minutes. And all of a sudden, she had like a little vomit coming out of her mouth like a snake. She fell backwards on the carpet. She began to shake, and she was speaking with other tongues. When she come out of it, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. There was a transfer of Satan to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Catholic Church would call that an exorcism, or other people would call it different things. I want to just tell you, I'm glad I know there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood. Ephesians 6, 13. Not only is the rulers of darkness, rulers in this world, principalities, evil, spiritual wickedness in high places, but it says to the church, to the Christian, therefore take up the whole armor of God. Go back. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. We've got to have our armor. Go ahead. Keep going. Stand therefore having your having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that you are able to stand in the evil day, and we are standing in the evil day. Now, now look at me and hear me very clearly. There is a real devil. And demon powers who are trying to drag you into hell whether by family, whether by mother-in-laws, whether by enemies at work, 
whether by race or color or anything else, I want to tell you the devil works on the senses. The devil works on people and the sin that so easily besets you. I'm told the average uh, educated intellectual American today no longer believes in devils and demons. I don't know why they say that. I was over here by, uh, what's the name of that street over here with all the, all the big malls and so forth. And uh, it's, a, the, it's the name of a, of a Catholic priest, praise you. Friars Road, amen. I was over on Friars Road and I was in that plaza and I went to eat and there was a store there. And I walked in the store and it looked like chessboards to that. It was all these dinky little wizards and, and wackos and, and snarling things and big curly horns and creepy critters. And it's the, it was the darkest looking store I've ever been in my life. I thought, oh, nobody believes in this stuff. Are you kidding me? Demon powers work exclusively in these areas. I'm going to explain right now to control real people. The first one, they begin with oppression. They begin with oppression. Oppression is a noun. It means being subject to control or cruelty or unjust treatment. It's the state of tyranny. It's pressure. It's persecution. It's fear tactics. It's depression that comes upon a human being to control you. The devil will use headaches. He'll use isolation. He'll use desolation. He'll use all kinds of depression to work on a person and come against you. It's the cruel exercise of power of evil over a person. Cruelty to oppress you. And then there's obsession. Everybody say obsession. Obsession means the state of being obsessed compulsive. Obsessive compulsive. <laughs> it means to be obsessed with something. Something gets a hold of you. It's a habit. It's a thought. It's an idea. It takes over your mind. It overwhelms your desires. It's obsessive in your mind. It's an emotion. It's an addiction. It's a desire of a fixed idea that affects your thoughts or action. I gotta have another cigarette. I gotta have another cigarette. I gotta have a drink right now. I gotta have a drink. I gotta have a hit. I gotta have a hit. I gotta have my drug. Hallelujah. It's an obsession, a desire on a fixed idea. And the last work of demon spirits is possession. It's the state of being owned or controlled. Visible power and control seen by others over somebody else else or over something. It's the law of occupancy. Mostly it's land or real estate. And of course it's persons. The manual control and custody over somebody's mind and actions. It's dominion over a human being. It is called possession. Oppression. Obsession. Possession. Robert Lawrence Kuhn, who is the host and creator of Closer to Truth. I read his article yesterday, April 2010, quote, two-thirds of Americans not only believe that demons exist, but that they are also active in the earth in people. And skeptics are dumbfounded by such laughable, archaic nonsense. February 2009, CBS News, New York Times took a poll. Found out that 63%, this was back in 2009, 63% of people in America believe in demon power. 72% of the political conservatives believe in the devil. 49% of the liberals do not. Makes sense. They act like the devil. I'm asking you a question this morning. Do you believe in a devil? Do you believe in a devil? Hallelujah. As the, importance, as the importance placed on religion decreases in a life. As the importance of religion is people place on religion decreases, so does the belief in the devil and demon powers. There's right now in America the greatest revival of Satan worship, devil worship, necromancing, occult, wizardry and Satan worship that I have 
ever seen in my life. Why? Because God has promised in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. When God pours out his spirit, when God promises to give the gift of the Holy Ghost, when God says, I'm going to do great things in the earth, the devil rises up and he poly parrots and he dovetails with it for a satanic revival. Satan's desire has always been to be worshipped. That's why he was cast out of heaven. Somebody get with me and say amen. I want to hear from this Louisiana crowd tonight. I want to hear from this camp meeting tonight. I want to tell you deception is a powerful thing. Have you ever been deceived? Have you ever been deceived? A boyfriend, girlfriend, anything? Have you ever been deceived? Let me tell you, deception is deception. But the deception of deception is deception. Did you hear what I said? The deception of deception is deception. Satan's desire was to be worshipped. America is now worshipping at Satan's altar. It's in the music like crazy. It's in the movies. It's in the campuses. It's in Hollywood. It's on the, it's in the witch covens that are on the rise. Great Britain's Mr. Black member of parliament said this atrocious, atrocious quote. He said 80% of Britain's youth right now across Great Britain have turned or tried to get in touch with wizards, witches, or Satan. I don't know where he got that. I'm just quoting it. 80% of the Britain kids have tried to get in contact with evil spirits. Moscow, Russia recently reports they have villages outside in the news, outside of Moscow that are infested with spiritual demons. Many witches are thriving and the communists are baffled what to do with it. Millions of Americans have switched their allegiance from God to a yoga master, sorcery, spiritual priests, psychic seers, voodoo for their spiritual guidance. I see it all the time. They must make a lot of money. You go down I-5 going south, you go over here, you see these great big lit up signs. I don't even know how the city allows them to put such a big sign up. We can't get a sign out here bigger than the size of a half of a car and the city has a fit and they'll put up 25 foot signs. Palm reader. I got a good mind to grab a palm tree and walk in there and say, would you read my palm? Praise God. Palm reader. Dear God have mercy. You look at the world we're living in. Mankind was made in whose image? I said mankind was made in whose image? Wow, somebody's read the Bible. I must be in the right place. We were made in the image and the likeness of God. We were created to be worshipers. Now you're going to worship at an altar. I promise you because you were made by God and made like God, you're going to be a worshiper. If you don't find Jesus Christ, if you don't find the Lord to worship, you'll worship a dead Elvis Presley. You'll camp your tent outside in Memphis and and eat his chili beans and everything else and, and wear his little things around your neck. Oh, Elvis, 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 Elvis. Man, I liked him too. Let me tell you who he was. He was a, he's a, a Jesus name, Holy Ghost filled kid that took the wrong turn. And that is the truth. Praise God. He was once one of us. They're switching their allegiance. We have people looking for spiritual guides. People have to have a spiritual power greater than them to follow so they look for something beyond themselves. How many are glad I'm not carrying a cane this morning? Give me a hand. Praise God. If man does not worship the living God, he has to manufacture a replacement for the living God or follow the devil straight out. We find some Christians all over the place now. They're wearing fish. I never have studied that out. I don't know what the deal on the fish is. Jesus is a fish. I don't know. I don't even know what it means. I just know it's a Christian symbol. They got it all over their cars and their bumper stickers. I saw a guy a while back. He had one of them cars like Adam Sawyer. And he had a hundred bumper stickers all over that thing. 
And right in the middle, it said, ban bumper stickers. I'll never forget it. Praise God. Ban bumper stickers. But when we look at this age that we're living in, we've got crosses and bumper stickers. The Satanists are far out doing this. They're wearing necklaces with crosses and horns and warlocks and wizards and jewelry and astrological signs. And, 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 and I took my grandkids the other day right over off of uh, Chase Avenue. There is a great big comic store. Comic, I don't know what it is. Comic store. I took them in there because I used to read about Superman. I, and I don't go throwing me in hell. I read about Batman. And, uh, you know, and I, I went and they wanted some comics. And we walked in that place. My hair started to curl, all in these big glass cases where these leprechauns and demon-possessed things and, and evil spirits and people coming at you with their teeth hanging out of their mouth and spit coming off their tongue. And I thought, my God, people buy this for their kids? It was throughout those glass cases. Dear God, there was nothing about the Lord. There was nothing about God. It was weird, nasty stuff. And years ago, there was a couple up in Escondido that called us up to Escondido. And when we went up there, they said, our child is having problems with nightmares. And he's a scaredy cat. And he's afraid of the dark. And and we're afraid he's dealing with spirits. Can you help us? And we went over to their house. My wife and I walked in. They're showing us the house. Here's the bathroom. Here's the bedroom room and 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 here's our son's room my god i didn't want to walk in the room they had a poster seven foot tall right in the corner of the room next to his bed where his head lays down of darth vader i said i'll tell you right now what's wrong you got that nasty ugly thing that looks like the devil right next to your kid's bed that's what he sees before he goes to sleep at night you ought to take that thing out and burn it Hallelujah. Then the force will be with you. Come on. Say praise the Lord, somebody. Come on. Say praise the Lord, somebody. 25 years ago in the United States of America, parapsychology was unheard of. Parapsychology. Who who can tell me what that means? Parapsychology. A lot of you don't even know what it is. 25 years ago was unheard of parapsychology. It is now one of the major university courses in any campus in America. It's controversial phenomena of -of out-of-body experiences, psychic telepathy, psychic phenomena of doing things out of your body and then coming back to your body in spiritual energy and a transfer. Let me tell you what I think. I think that back when I was a kid, America kicked out the Bible out of our schools. It kicked prayer out of our schools. It kicked Jesus out of our schools. And now we are seeing a second and third generation of kids that go to school that have no prayer, no God, no truth, no Ten Commandments. And a void was created and replaced by Satan. Now we've got violence. Now we've got murder, the killing of teachers, the killing of students, guns, pregnancies of teenagers and Satanism. A university student body activist said, quoted this, this. He quoted this, legions of demons that once covered the third world countries are taking over America and have arrived at our campuses. It used to be movies called Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, Mike Jagger's Sympathy with the Devil. Now there's a literal waterfall of demon possession, Satan possession, Satan worship movies coming out of Hollywood. Vince and I went to the largest bookstore I've ever walked in in my life in San Francisco, California. And we were just amazed at the many floors of books. We got to one area called Satanism and the Occult. There was 10 rows of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books on Satan and books on demon worship. Dear God have mercy. We have a problem in this country. (laughs) Even the Pope quoted, the devil is alive and well. The word Satan is a Greek word. Does anybody know what the word Satan means? The word Satan means your adversary. He's out to get you. 
His goal is to damn your soul, to take you to hell. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible tells us the root word of the devil is demonia. Demonia it means powers that can take up residency in a human being. They enter you, they control you. Oppression, obsession, possession. They control you, they take over. I had a parasite years ago that I got some somewhere in Asia and and that parasite liked to kill me and it was in me and it was laying eggs and my wife wouldn't kiss me she didn't want want anything to do with it praise God I'm glad the Lord healed me because she kisses me a lot now praise God but I want to tell you something that's one good reason to get rid of a parasite but I'm also wanting to tell you that the Bible says that demon spirits or evil spirits are unclean they're unclean <coughs> I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. They're violent. They're vicious. They're hateful. They're evil. They're malicious. <laughs> they are in conflict with God. They are anti-God. They are anti-Christ. They are anti-Bible. They are anti-holy. They are anti-righteousness. Please understand something. You cannot be full of the Holy Ghost and full of the devil. You think we're playing church around here? You think this pastor's playing church here at the Anchor Church? I want to tell you, I'm missing our prayer meetings on Sunday, mo on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm missing them because we are in a warfare. It's spiritual warfare. And we must remain full of the Holy Ghost. Not half full. Not partially full. You get unfull of the Holy Ghost. Man, you get to stinking thinking. Got Limburger cheese under your lip. You start thinking, stinking, praise God. Full of the devil. If you live carnal and always are trying to get closer to the world, you have opened the door. Abierto. Abierto. You have opened the door to harassment, to a bothering spirit, things that will injure you, things that will work on you. That will finally weaken you. That's why we must attend church. That's why we must pray. That's why we must hear the word of God. It washes us. It cleanses us. It fills us full of faith. That's why we attend church. Again, that's why we must pray. Walk after the Spirit. It said we wrestle. Not with flesh and blood. We wrestle spirits. I was in high school. I took up wrestling. Have you ever wrestled? Guy gets down on all fours. You put your fist under his gut, your, bat, your arm over his back, and they blow that whistle. And the guy underneath is trying to spin out and get away from you. And you're on top of him and you try to keep him under you. And the whole idea is to pin the guy. His back down, face to face, you pin him down. If you've never wrestled like that, friend, that is the most exhausting 30 seconds in life. It is horribly exhausting. And the Bible says we are wrestling against spiritual warfare. People are defenders and protectors of unclean spirits. How can you say that, Pastor Larson? You, you, are you a good American? Are you patriotic? How can you say these things? Just look. Just observe. Listen to me right now. Listen carefully. The Word of God says clearly that at the time of the end, more demon spirits will be unleashed on the earth. How many believe we're at the time of the end? It says more and new demon spirits will be unleashed upon the earth in the end time from the pit. Yes, sir, more powerful. Fresh troops. Seducing spirits. And doctrines of devils. Waxing worse and worse. Listen now. Deceiving. And being deceived. Causing violence and trouble throughout the earth. 
say what you will, the last six years I've seen a tremendous upsurge of evil, murder, bloodshed. I've never seen anything like it. There's an immense change in America's morals. Violent crime. You can literally see it. Number one is the demon of drugs. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I tell you, according to the word of God, there's a tremendous relationship between sorcery, witchcraft, and drugs, according to the Bible. Drugs are out of control. Then there's the demon of alcoholics. 17 million alcoholics in America. They are so wiped out by the drug of drink that they are invalids from drinking and the murders from car accidents and, and the crazy things that they do and the shootings and the home destruction because of alcoholism. God have mercy. And number three is the pornography sex obsession. You see it literally taking over this Cleveland man that held three girls hostage for 10 years as his sex slaves. He is now going to jail for a thousand years. I think God will have something to do with the end of that sentence. Noah's day, the Bible says their mind was on evil continually. The change to sodomy in the last, just the last few years. Sodom's lifestyle is now proclaimed as legal marriage. And God said it is an abomination. God said that. Dear Lord, intelligent people. Listen, look at me. Tell me I'm not politically right. Say anything you want. Castigate me. I'm not going to change <coughs> what the Bible says. I just want you to see. We think that spiritual forces aren't working. We think that evil seductions aren't happening. It's taking over our government. It's taking over the Supreme Court. We're literally baffling God and throwing it up in his face. We're going against God's word. Somebody say amen. amen. And we look and see. This situation, our generation no longer believes that they have anybody to reckon with. There is no God. There is no judgment day. There is no, I'm not worried about it. Oh, only evil spirits could take a country and flip flop it in five years and make that which is evil good and that which is good evil. It is absolutely mind blowing. What's really going on? Demons know. Yea, Satan knows his time is short. Can you feel it? Can you understand it? There is an epiphany. There is a literal momentum going on. Jesus is about to come. Jesus could come today. He's coming back just like he said he was going to come. And you can see what's happening in our world today. Dear God, the Bible says, uh, the Bible teaches uh, that Satan will be bound for a thousand years and cast in the lake of fire. What a wonderful day. Satan is finally cast into the lake of fire. We'll need no more policemen. We'll need no more firemen. We'll need no more armies. We'll be in the presence of God. Everything will be all right when God decides to move. But Satan has been proficient for 6,000 years to get people out of the church to get one race to hate another race. It's all de demon powers. We're all born in the image and the likeness of God. We're all brothers and sisters. Thank God for the church. Amen? Amen. Every color in the body of Christ is one color, and that's the blood of Jesus. Come on up. Say, say amen, everybody. But the devil loves to stir up hate and strife and emulation and violence. Just look how America just... Sick it, sick it, sick me, sick me. Come on, come on, let's just hate. Let's just fall for that. The devil's very busy. Man fell in the garden of Eden in the beginning. He created havoc and pain and hell and death and sorrow. He was there in the beginning and he's much more here in the end. Take a look at the wild man of Gadara. The only power greater than the devil is the power of the name of Jesus. That's why we need scripture. 
When the devil met Jesus on his fast week, he came against Jesus and Jesus said, he quoted him scripture. It's the only thing you defeat the devil with is the word of God. You look at this portfolio as I wind down. The wild man of Gadara. He was a man of an unclean spirit. Everybody say unclean spirit. The filth and the moral pollution in the United States is an epic proportion. America has literally had unclean spirits descend down upon us. It's all over the world. People wake up to a new day to create new evil and new ways of perversion. Jesus looked on the man. The Bible said he had an unclean spirit. Number two, the Bible says the demon spirits tore off his clothes. He was completely naked. He was nude in public. Nudity is prevailing as never before today. Hollywood, styles from France, hemlines, necklines, flesh parade. We just had something Pride Week here in San Diego. We just had it. If you went down and enjoyed the parade, I wasn't there. But if you had been there, I can tell you, you would have seen all kinds of human organs showing. Maybe not physically, publicly, but with parades and masks and, 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 and equipment that they use to be absolutely dastardly and filthy. Nudity prevails. The, fair, the Paris fashions. Yeah, I'm telling you, even beachwear today leaves nothing to the imagination. The nudist colonies are more popular than ever because it's all working with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. He was mentally deranged. One out of four Americans have some kind of psycho-cybernetic mental problem. Half of the people in our hospitals have mental problems, organic problems, psyche problems, under demon influence. The Bible says he was uncontrollable. They could not put him in anything that could keep him. He broke out. He was very violent. Have you ever seen more violence in America than today? I grew up watching the box scores in the paper. I was a paper boy. I love to get the paper in the morning. What are the Cardinals doing today? What are the Twins doing today? And I'd read... Oliva, four for four. Killebrew, two for three. Grand Slam home run. Man, I just get so excited reading those baseball box scores. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. But I want you to know something. If you buy the Chicago Tribune today, it might be looking at a box score. How many people have been murdered that night? How many people have been shot in the head? How many children have been caught in the crossfire? It's every day. It's every day. It's every day. It's got to stop. Something's got to happen. Dear Jesus, have mercy. Muggings and rapists and carjacking. you got to look over your shoulder even if you're six foot seven. It's not going to be stopped by police power. It's got to be done by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's got to be done by the power. The power of God moving, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, a spiritual awakening. And he lived among the dead. He lived in the cemeteries. Oh, God. The Bible says we are dead in our sins. You're dead as a sinner. You're dead in your transgressions till Jesus Christ covers you with his blood, according to Acts 2.38. Praise God. And then the Bible says he cut himself, self-abuse. He cut himself with knives and he bled. He was bleeding when Jesus saw him. We are living in the day and age. And if you're a military person and you're, you're a person with a tattoo, I'm not saying you got any kind of spiritual problem. I just want you to know that there is a connection of hating yourself, of abusing yourself. There's so many tattoos today and disfiguring jewelry and punctures and tongue hooks. Uh, somebody's got to say it. It's all part of the age we're living in. Jesus stood and he looked into that boy's face, a wild man of Gadara, red-eyed, violent, bleeding, naked man, and a supernatural voice spoke out of him and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to torment me before my time? Is that clear enough? Jesus said, what's your name? Jesus didn't fear. Legion, for I am many. Come! 
come out of him. The, the demon spirits, did you read it when I read it? He said, Lord, called him Lord. Don't put us in hell, all right, please. Don't send us to hell right now. The demon spoke out. Where do you want to go? The pigs. Oh, does that fit? You ever hung out with pigs for a week? I'm not talking about Cub Scouts. I mean real pigs. Fitch that the, the demon spirits wanted to go into a, the pigs. Amen. That's the first mention in the Bible of devil ham. The devils went into the pigs. The devils went into the pigs and the pigs vomited and ran off and choked in the sea. The man was delivered of 6,000 demons. A legion. When the word got out, they came from all over the region. And the next time you see this guy, he is sitting with Jesus. He's clothed. He is full of peace. The fruit of the Spirit's in him. He's gentle. He is in his right mind. That's what happens when you receive Acts 2.38. Put that up there. You think this is just a church to have a show? Am I up here the travel and salvation band? Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins, and you shall receive God in you. Yes. God. How many appreciate the Holy Ghost? Stand to your feet and clap your hands to the Lord. Are you guilty of being a defender and a protector of unclean spirits that buffet your mind and come against your soul? I want the singers to get in place, music to start being played. We've got to read something very, very powerful in closing. But ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would you get for me Genesis 19, 1 through 18? Sounds like a lot of scriptures, but boy, is this important. Boy, is this important. The people that saw Jesus deliver the biggest problem in the history of their community asked Jesus to leave town. We don't want this. They were defenders and protectors of the wrong spirit. Jesus never, ever went back. The young man said to Jesus, can I go with you? He said, no. You go be a witness. You tell everyone what I have done in your life. I really don't know how long I will be able to preach with the freedom I have. I thank God for it. Please look at this, and you make your own decision. But I want to show you where we're headed. If you've looked at the last five years, I want to show you, because God is not mocked. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. And Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. That is the city council. And when Lot saw them, I want you to see this, folks. Lot recognized they were angels from God. Lot rose and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. 
And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn in your servant's house and spend the night. Come to my house. I'm going to wash your feet. That you may rise early and go on your way. And the angel said, No, we will spend the night in the street. In Sodom and Gomorrah. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast, and he baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, before they lay down, the men of the city, this is Sodom, folks, the Sodomites, both old Sodomites and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded this godly man's house. And they called the lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. Let me be as clear as I can. Let us know them and molest them. And homosexuals are not born. They are created by experience. So Lot went out through the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, please, please, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know who's in my house. Do not so wickedly against these men. I have two daughters who have not known a man. They're virgins. Please let me bring them out to you. And you may do to my very daughters what you wish. Only do nothing to these men. You don't understand. Since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. Then they said, this one came in to stay here and he keeps acting as a judge. This, this righteous guy that thinks he's some big preacher, that thinks he can judge other people. You're acting like a judge now. We will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man, Lot, and they came to break down his door. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house and shut the door. And they struck, the angels struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. And the men said to Lot, have you anyone else here in the city? He said, I have son-in-laws, my sons and daughters, whoever you have in the city, take them out of this place now. For we will destroy this place because of the outcry of them has grown great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord had the Lord has sent, the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws who married his daughters and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his son-in-laws, he seemed as one joking. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, Hurry, hurry, arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of this city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand and his wife's hand and the hands of his daughters, the angels, the Lord being merciful, brought them out and set them outside of the city. So it came to pass when they brought them outside and he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. Now I've got a couple more verses. Lot said, please no, my lords, please no. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you've increased your mercy, which you have shown by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil or take me, and I die. See, now this city is near enough to flee, and it's a little one. Please let me escape. Is this not a little one, and my soul shall live? I have favored you. You're going to too many verses. I want to give you just the two that I wrote at the end. The two at the end. Give me those last two. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Next verse. But his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. God sent angels to literally pull them out of Sodom. And even after leaving Sodom, the pull was so strong, his wife could not help but look back. The Bible says the pastor is in God's hand, and the Bible calls them an angel of the church. I stand today 
trying to pull you out of the fire. I stand today trying to save your soul. I stand here with open arms. It's time for this church to recognize the hour you're living in. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Let's sing a chorus. I'm inviting you to an altar. I'm inviting you to a place to pray. I'm inviting you to save yourself. I'm inviting you to not be a protector and a defender of unclean spirits. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Lord, renew in me a right spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I just want to find a place to pray. Oh, God, I don't want to be a defender and a protector of an unclean devil. God only knows what's coming upon this city, coming upon this country. Lord Jesus, 